It is a war with no clear end in sight. But if there is any potential resolution, it would come on the heels of a 21st century innovation that looks like it'll be the future of battle. They're carrying out attacks in Moscow, the Black Sea, and on the battlefield while gathering reconnaissance and doing some real damage. In tonight's Prime Focus, Ian Pennell gives us a rare look at Ukraine's expanding drone operations and the men and women taking the fight to Russia in what's being considered the first ever drone war. It may not look like a battlefield. And they certainly don't look like natural born killers. But the army of the future might just lie here. A new generation of drone operators will be more brain than brawn. Like musicians, they'll need nimble fingers, lightning fast reactions, excellent concentration, and rapid thinking. Musicians and gamers, the call of duty is sounding. Meet Ukraine's new drone warriors. ABC News has been given rare access to this secretive program. From November last year through May, Ukraine trained 10,000 drone pilots. Another 10,000 are being trained right now. This kind of warfare isn't just highly technical, it's also highly dangerous. The drone pilots, as they're known, can't be identified. We can't even tell you where we are, because for the Russians, this guy is a high-value target. And if they know who he is and where he is, they'll try to kill him. The problem is that I want to be able to use all the available means to destroy the enemy for the purpose of winning. Because now the Ukrainian army has a lot of support from Western partners, but we have to develop our own direction. And now in Ukraine there is the most не впливовим, а найбільш приміняються саме такі технології, які не приміняються, або верніше, ще ніде не примінялися в жодних конфліктах. Ukraine's building an army of drones and they're already indispensable on the battlefield. Some spy on Russian positions, identifying targets that are then hit by artillery and mortar fire. Others are attack drones, dropping ordnance or exploding on impact, killing Russian soldiers hiding in trenches, blowing up tanks on the front lines striking artillery pieces hidden in tree lines, hitting stockpiles of munitions and key supply lines. We traveled with the drone units on a mission in eastern Ukraine. The Leleka, or Stork, is one of dozens of homegrown UAVs. It can fly hundreds of miles, relaying live pictures, and with an electric motor, it's much quieter and so harder to spot. They help to coordinate all of the artillery fire and all of the reconnaissance actions. And basically, this is uh, some kind of a future of war. This is the riskiest part of the operation because as soon as they break cover, they can be spotted and targeted by Russian drones or artillery. Drone warfare has now become very real. As you can see, they're about to launch one. This is for surveillance and reconnaissance. One, go! Today's mission, fly over Russian-occupied territory to Bakhmut. Scene of the longest and bloodiest battle of this war. The images are haunting. A rare glimpse of one of the most heavily fought over cities, now shattered and shot. Ukraine may be getting billions in military aid, but it's not just relying on handouts. One year ago, there were only seven manufacturers making drones in Ukraine. Today, there are at least 80. Across the country, factories and workshops are springing up, manufacturing, forging, even 3D printing drones. Dmitry Kovalchuk embodies the entrepreneurial spirit driving this quiet revolution. In one year, he's gone from making just three drones a month to 150 today. In Ukraine, the state не виготовляє жодного дрона. Всі дрони, які виготовляються, всі абсолютно виготовляються підприємцями. Faced with an enemy with far greater firepower and resources, the cost benefit of drones is obvious. То відсотків саме так і буде, тому що сьогодні дрон, який коштує 1000 доларів, може вже знищити танк, який коштує 500 тисяч доларів. І да, будуть зміни. І да, точно це буде або війна дронів, або армії дронів. Skyatom is one of the most advanced UAV manufacturers. 
Its Raybird reconnaissance drone costs over a million dollars and can fly for more than 30 hours at an altitude of over 16,000 feet, relaying real-time high-quality images of enemy positions deep into Russian territory. Alexander Stapura, the founder and chairman of Skyatom, says UAVs need to be able to prioritize and identify targets. For us, tanks are not objects for, uh, for recognition and for impaction. Right. For us, it's a war warfare system, it's an artillery system, air defense system from the other side. So this is the object we'd like to recognize and to destroy. So this should think for itself? Absolutely. The UAV already has basic AI or artificial intelligence built in, but developers are looking at a new generation that could totally transform warfare. Era of manned aircraft uh, in terms of air force completely ended. Ended with this war? Ended with this war. This war showed that uh, to have the person inside of the flying board, no reason to do that, no sense. The pilot uh, doesn't have time to think, never. It's just milliseconds, and uh, any machine will do that better than people. And faster. Yeah, and faster, and more accurately. This new army of drones is now taking the war to the heart of Russia, in Moscow, showing Putin and Russians that the homeland is no longer immune from this war and that Ukraine has new, longer-range drone capability. ABC News has obtained this image of the drone used in these latest Moscow attacks. It's a Bobair long-range UAV. A drone developer with intimate knowledge of this top-secret program agreed to talk to us anonymously. The psychological impact of being able to strike in places like Moscow or in Russian territorial waters is far greater than the power of the drone itself. It's very important for us. We show them that too can play this game. It's very important to make Russians know that we also have weapons. We also can attack them. And is it reasonable to expect not just that the c capability of drones is going to increase, but the number of attacks inside Russia is also likely to increase. Yes, the more drones that are produced, the more attacks will be provided. My understanding of what the goals are is to have capability to strike all strategic aviation airfields, to push back strategic aviation capable of launching missiles. And it's not just airfields and aviation, but warships at sea too. A new generation of maritime drones burst onto the scene with two dramatic attacks. Firstly, a Russian warship was struck inside its own territorial waters with a drone carrying almost a thousand pounds of explosives. Then the following day, a strike on an oil tanker supplying Russian troops. Ukraine not admitting it carried out these particular strikes, but ABC News has been given rare access to part of its top secret drone program that intelligence officials now admit is being used to target Russia in the Black Sea. What you're looking at now is the latest weapon in Ukraine's armory, an unmanned sea drone capable of being packed with explosives and rammed into Russian ships. And this has had an enormous effect, not just physically, but psychologically, taking the war to Russia in the Black Sea. The Magora sea drone was only developed late last year, and yet already it's been deployed multiple times. It sits low in the water, making it hard to detect and intercept. Military intelligence releasing videos of recent strikes against Russian ships. What is the range on this drone? As of now, it's about 800 kilometers. This information is available from open sources. The range, the payload, the length of the drone, and so on. That would suggest that no Russian ship is safe anymore in the Black Sea. That's exactly what our work is about. Ukraine's shown the world not just that it can stand up to a far more powerful military, but that new drone technology can potentially revolutionize the way war is fought. Drones have made huge differences on the battlefield here. But for all the high-tech talk, this is still a very old-school war, with men, not machines, in the trenches and the fields of Ukraine, fighting and dying every single day.
all the loss of life, one aspect that has not changed with time. Our thanks to Ian Panel for that. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.